Download the script from Emu's site. The link will be in the description box. You'll need to extract the files from the zipped container and place it into an easy to find location, like on the desktop. After you've opened up Emu's project, you'll want to open up your own. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll create a project from scratch. Step 2 will involve you copying and pasting the scripts from Enu script editor into your own project script editor. Make sure you have ample space for this. We'll be working with about 5 scripts. Each script should also be appropriately named. In case of errors, you'll be able to reference back to them easily. Now that you've successfully installed all the scripts, it's time to move on to our next step. In step 3, we'll be inserting the custom graphics. To do this, open up Enu's Resource Manager and take a look through his folders to see how many custom graphics he has imported into his game. You'll know they're custom graphics based on the red dot that appears next to the name. Now, you'll want to go into your own project's resource manager and click on the first folder that you'll need to import the graphics into. Once you click on import, look for Enu's project file within your computer and open up the resources until you reach the graphics folder. You'll then find a list of folders needed to import the custom graphics. Do this for each of the folders in your resource manager. You'll have to reference back to Enu's resource manager to see just which folders actually contain custom graphics. If you can't find them, make sure to export them out to the desktop. Now you're ready to move on to step 4, which tends to be the most overlooked, replacing the animations.rvdata2 file. In order to use skills and magic in version 100 of Takentai, you'll need version 99's animations.rvdata2 file. There will be a link in the description box of this video as well as on my YouTube homepage which will take you to a Mediafire download link which contains only the animations.rvdata2 file from version 99. Make sure to download it and the readme file. Next, you'll need to open up your project's data folder and copy and paste the animations.rvdata2 file into that folder or just drag and drop. Make sure to click on Move and Replace to eliminate the old file and replace it with the new one. Now it's time to test your game. From here on out, it's really simple to customize the placement of the enemy battlers in your database. All you have to do is just enter the Troops tab and drag and drop where you want them to be. Make sure to check out the other resources I provide on how to further customize Takentai. You can find them in the description box. Hey there, Passive Line community! I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, but I'd hate to see you leave without subscribing first. There's also a subscribe button at the bottom of this video. And don't forget to share and embed it on your favorite developer forum. And if you enjoyed it that much, please leave a like. 
Hey guys, the website is up and running. I am so excited to finally be able to announce that. I've got reviews on the site for video games. I've built it to kind of handle that. Uh, and I've also got news articles. Uh, what some of them I've already written that are detailing a few things on the changes that Passive Line is undergoing, which is really cool stuff. Uh, check that out. You can contact me through the contact page. As always, guys, this has been your friendly neighborhood Passive Line signing out. Instead, it said the name was physically impossible for you to have because it broke profanity filters. Passive Line. Can someone please tell me how, how Passive Line would break profanity filters? Passive Line. Ah, oh, yeah.